Wilson again from Fortis College in Columbia, South Carolina, where I'm a clinical laboratory instructor. Today I want to talk to you about urinalysis. Urine is the most commonly analyzed fluid in a clinical laboratory setting. Uh, byproducts of metabolism are excreted and measured through urinalysis. These results give a doctor an idea to determine whether or not they need to um, do further testing on the urinalysis. There are many ways to collect urine, from clean catch samples to two-hour prandials to first morning urine, many, many ways to collect. Today I'm going to talk to you about a random specimen. This is urine that you can take at any time of the day. So the first thing you want to do is make sure as a medical assistant that you give the patient proper instructions as well as analyzing the urine correctly. Timing is very important in a urinalysis. The longer that urine sits, the more bacteria builds up in it and we could get false results. So the first thing you want to do is tell the patient to wash their hands thoroughly. You'll give them a collection cup that's already pre-labeled with their name, date of birth, or maybe their medical record number. Ask the patient to fill the cup up at least halfway. This gives us the least amount we need, which is 12 mLs of fluid. The ideal amount is 50 mLs that's needed for proper analysis. Afterwards, have the patient recap our specimen cup, wash their hands, and then return the specimen cup to you for analysis. Okay, we have our sample back of urine from our patient here. As you can see, I also have a timer as well as our reagent strips that we're going to use to run the urinalysis. Um, the reason I'm going to demonstrate first and just kind of walk you through of how we're going to do the test is because um, I need to make sure that you understand that these reagent strips need to actually stay inside of the bottle until they're ready to be used on a urinalysis. So this strip here is going to go against the bottle and as you can see we have different color blocks that are matched up across here on our on our bottle. Underneath each block are numbers. So whichever color the blocks match up to going across will be the result of that particular test. So that's another reason why I'm kind of showing you ahead of time before I do the test is because we don't want to hold this strip up against the bottle after it has been dipped in urine because of course we will contaminate the bottle. Okay, so I'll put that strip back in for just a second. The second part of the test is the timing. Timing is very, very important. Here I have pre-wrote the times and as I do the test you'll notice that I start from the bottom and I'm going to work my way up. The reason is because this entire test takes two minutes. So in 30 seconds I have to write down the number of my glucose and, and um, bilirubin. Then in 40 seconds I'll need to write down ketones. In 45 seconds I'll write down specific gravity. In 60 seconds, I'll record the blood, the pH, the protein, the urobilogen, the nitrites. I have to wait a full two minutes before I can actually record the results of our leukocytes. On our bottle here, if you ever forget the times that these need to be recorded, it's wrote here on the side of the bottle from starting from the bottom at 30 seconds and all the way up to two minutes, the same way that I have here on our sheet. So again, it's very, very important to make sure that you have to work a little bit quickly. You have to make sure that you do wait the full two minutes for your leukocytes to be tested for your urine. So what I like to do is start my clock at zero rather than starting it at two minutes, I'm sorry, rather than starting it at 120 seconds and working my way down, I prefer to just start at zero and then start my testing at 30, 40, 45, and so on. All right, I've removed my reagent strip from the bottle. This is a strip that I will be going across and comparing the um, results of the urine to, okay? Um, first thing I'm gonna do before we dip the strip is do kind of a visual analysis of the urine. So we also not only have to write down the readings that we get from the urine from our reagent strip, but we also want to document the color of the urine. We like a nice straw color. So this one is a good color straw. The volume of the urine, we have about 60 mLs, which is written on the bottle. It's a little hard to see with the urine, but the mLs are marked on here. So we have about 60 mLs. When you first open the urine, if you notice any type of an odor um, that comes from the urine, you want to um, make sure you write that here. I wrote negative for odor because I don't smell anything unusual from the urine. Turbidity is something else that you can document, which is whether or not the urine is clear or cloudy. Here our turbidity 
is clear, okay? So now I can go on to the chemical part of our urinalysis. So we have to make sure that each one of these boxes on our reagent strip get completely covered with urine. So I'll dip this, and in 30 seconds, I will start analyzing our glucose and bilirubin. We wanna keep our strip horizontal to dab off excess, and I'm gonna go ahead and start my clock. We don't want runoff of urine to get on any of the boxes above or below, so we'll keep it horizontal. I'm at um, almost 15 seconds now, so once I hit 30, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to record my glucose and my bilirubin at 30 seconds. So I'm gonna just hold the strip up to the bottle and compare how these colors change compared to these colors in our bottle. So we're at 30 seconds. It looks like our glucose here at the bottom is negative and our bilirubin is also negative. So I gotta make sure that I'm at right now 40 seconds and I'm going to check my ketones. Ketones are at a negative as well. In 45 seconds, which we need our specific gravity, which is a 1.015, at 60 seconds, I'm right at 59 seconds now, so 60 seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and check the blood, pH, protein, urobilogen, and nitrites, all right? So with blood, I have a negative pH, I have a 6.5, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that down, blood is negative. Protein, I have a, uh, let's, let's do pH, sorry, 6.5, got that. Protein, we are at a 15, and a 0.2 euro nitrites negative. So we're gonna say 15, 0 0.2 and negative nitrites. While I'm waiting for my two minutes, I'm at one minute, 38 seconds. I just like to kind of take a quick double look at all the ones that I did at 60 seconds. Okay, looks good. So I'm at one minute and 50 seconds. So in 10 more seconds, I will be able to read my last um, test, which is for leukocytes. So you can see I'm at exactly two minutes and leukocytes, we have negative results, okay? All right, so I will make sure that I keep my pen here because we wanna cavi wipe that. I will discard this reagent strip in biohazard. Go ahead and recap my urine. We'll do our sanitation and disinfection of our area as well as a good hand washing and then we'll transfer our documentation over to the patient's chart. And also please make sure that you keep your sample until the patient has left the office in case the physician wants to come back and take a look on their own.